What are you doing? What are you doing? What's going on? What's up? What are you doing? What's up? Whoa. Okay, enough. Sit. Good boy. I need to buy him a couple of sheep to chase. <laughs>
look at that. Aren't those just beautiful? The question is, do they work? Let's go for a walk. It's a nice day to have a coffee out in the back 40. Oh, look at that thing up there. You really don't see enough of him in the winter. Grab an armful of firewood and take with us. We don't have to find anything. That's a lot like work.
That's a bit of snow. Probably, probably an honest two feet on the level here. Out in the fields, it, uh, it's been blowing quite a bit, so you get big drifts, they're four feet deep, and everything else is, you know, a foot on it. Once you get into the trees, though, here is two feet. North of my place, about huh, 5K or so right now, we've got about three. I'll dig out a little hole, get some things set up here. Now that's what you call roughing it. We still need a pot hanger. do this intentionally because that would be baiting and we're not allowed to do that in Canada but this is a little area where I leave my grass clippings when I mow my yard and they just happen to sit in a nice sunny spot all summer and dry out and then the deer come in here in the winter and browse through it which is good because there ain't a whole lot left to eat at this time of the year around here and they hunt that field hard, hard, hard. Well, a month ago, the deer actually tracked down most of that field. Like, the, you couldn't see a spot that was five square feet that they hadn't been walking through and pawing at, so. And then they finally found my little hoard of grass clippings here and they've been going to town, so good on them. I don't always take a deer in the fall, but I usually pay attention to what they're doing all year round. It's actually not as dire as a lot of people say around here for deer. A lot of them think that everything's dying off. The winters are too harsh and the wolves are too many. Uh, we have really good deer numbers around here. They're just getting smart and they only come out at night. I think I got a pot hanger back over there. These uh, new snowshoes are the Faber S-Line, or a sliding snowshoe. 
and they work surprisingly well. I hate snowshoes. I walk with my feet too close together, it's a habit. I've been doing it for 40 years, and I ain't about to change now. However, these suckers are only six inches wide, and they're uh, the biggest ones. The next smaller size, I believe, are five inches wide. So, they're actually very easy to get used to, very easy to walk in. I don't have to walk bow-legged all day. Flotation-wise, ah, really not terrible. As comparing them to another pair of shoes I have, and actually they're not bad at all. I think I found a new favorite. There you go, Faber S-Line. This model is the uh, 646, I believe. Six inches wide and 46 inches long. Yeah. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I think I'll just take that dead one there. These are cotton glove liners. I've been using them for <laughs> a long time. I always say that, but usually it's because I've been using them for a long time. Very, very inexpensive. You buy a bundle of them, oh, I don't know, five or 10 bucks, you get like 20 pairs. You use them, get a couple of weeks out of them playing around and throw them away. Not everybody doesn't like disposable stuff, but these actually pay off pretty good. But that's my my helpful hint for the day for gloves. I just can't uh, can't get a handle on those ninja ice gloves. They just they dig into my fingers too much. I lose circulation on them. So I wish they were a little bit bigger in the fingers. That'd be perfect, but...
just give that a few minutes to take hold. some primitive technical difficulties. A little bit of rearranging, that's all it took. I brought along a little snack. I figured I'd try it with you guys and maybe some of you'd be interested in that. I don't even know if you can uh, say what it is on YouTube. I really don't. And of course, a bunch of my friends and coworkers are wondering, is it a bunch of little ones? Or maybe it's just one slice of a big one? Who knows? I guess we're gonna find out. Let's crack this bad boy open and see what we got. Hmm. It looks good. It smells pretty good. Yeah. Put it next to the fire for a bit and warm it up. No, water's boiling. Coffee's in the pot. Let me get that bad boy off of there. That smells awesome. Today's choice of coffee is, well, I'll just show you. <laughs> mm. that sniper's hide is one of my Favorite, favorite coffees from Black Rifle. And it looks like our, uh, I can't mention it on YouTube, is done. I don't even know if I can build a thumbnail that shows the cover and have it on the beginning of my video. I'm going to have to play with my software a little bit and see if I can. I haven't really figured out how to create thumbnails yet. Well, maybe if any of you have a foolproof way to do it and iMovie and then import it to YouTube and you can let me know in the comments. Um, I'm rather technically inept when it comes to building YouTube channels and making videos so I'll get that out of there and we'll have a taste. Okay here we go. It looks really good. It smells really good. Mm, well, it tastes pretty good. All it is is a certain kind of rye bread on the top and the bottom with smoked salmon in between it. Mm. That is a really good campfire snack. Mm. Pretty, 
press some coffee here. Yeah. Seeing a lot of videos lately on all kinds of new coffee stuff that uh, they're coming out. Well, it's the time of the year when they start uh, really uh, pushing summer gear for camping and backpacking because, well, people buy stuff now. They start thinking about buying stuff now that they're gonna use in the summer. So, there's all kinds of little coffee gadgets coming out. But really, come on, a French press. You've got a, a water filter and a pot that you can use. And on top of that, no disposable filters that you have to remember to pack. And you can use them once and throw them away. It's just, I don't know, it just seems easier this way to me. Maybe I'm wrong and everybody has their preference, but. I really like a French press out here. I mean, think about it. You have this beautiful little pot that you can use. You got a little basket there with the screen in the bottom. You just wash it and reuse it. Yeah, and they make good coffee. Well, I'm gonna enjoy some fire and finish my little lunch here. Remember folks, today's video brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee. Oh, and uh, this came from Verusta Lika. Um, those guys are pretty much on point with anything that they sell. No complaints there. If you don't check out their website or haven't checked out their website, you probably should. Their shipping to Canada is is really good deal. All right, back in a bit. Oh, the fire is starting to die down. Maybe I should give you a few opinions on things. So the Faber Snowshoes, or the Faber S-Line, uh, I used them for mm, two days over the weekend, well, two part days, stomping around getting, uh, getting firewood when I was camping. And honestly, I like them. I'm not a fan of a traditional snowshoe because I walk with my feet too close together, so... Uh, they're not like a cross-country ski, so don't let them sell you on the fact that they're a, a, a better solution to a cross-country ski. But they uh, they don't necessarily slide like a cross-country ski does. They've got uh, these little ribs here that point backwards and give you some traction. They work good. The quick release buckles, absolutely awesome. Um, my feet, I wear a size 13 in the winter and a size 12 in the summer. And the bindings are marginally big enough for my boots. So, and you can see by the tab there, I've got them stretched almost all the way out. So. If you're bigger than a size 13, you're probably not gonna like these very much. Um, you might squeeze a 14 in there or a big 13, but <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they come with these interchangeable skins on them that just clip on. And on my way out here, I seem to have lost one. So I'm pretty sure I know where that happened. So I'll comb the yard on the way back and see if I can find it. But flotation wise, probably not as good as a wider snowshoe. Uh, I think they are, I don't know, roughly 300 square inches per shoe, um, which is lots. I mean, you're, you're gonna sink in snow and this stuff is all powdery. And it's like a foot and a half of powder and six inches of hard pack, as you can kind of see here, so. But, yeah, I, I think they're worth the money. You can find them in Canada under 300 bucks for a pair. And 
if you're just dealing with rolling hills and nice prairie terrain like we have out here, then they're gonna be awesome for you. Uh, they make a wicked trail. Um, I noticed that on the weekend. Once you went in somewhere and you had a trail, um, you were laughing half as much or quarter as much effort on the way out. So that's, uh, that's a nice feature in snowshoes. Uh, easier to get out with them than it was in, as long as you're on the same trail. Well, I'm looking forward to my long trek back to the house there. <laughs> Made a heck of a path here. But this is what I was talking about. Even without the pulp behind me. These uh these shoes make a good trail. Super easy to get around with. I already missed my snowmobile. <laughs>